how you got this company started and the story behind these kinds of masks. Because I, I mean, they're really unique. We were staring at them before. We were like, yeah, we saw over. you guys yeah. like, right we were, like, there. looking at them. Like for an and we hour, got you were really hungry for cereal. <laughs> and it was a whole thing. But yeah, tell us a little bit more about how everything kind of got started. Well, we started in well, he started in two thousand five. I had a friend that kind of did. Um, like predator costumes. Oh. I always liked how he did them. He sculpted them. And, you know, yeah. So I learned the the casting aspect of it, and uh, never really learned the sculpting aspect of it. But we kind of turned it into a business in 2010 when Mally and I met. Um, the, one of the first things she ever did was rack me in duct tape for duct tape dummy. Yes. So and then there was the second date. So that's kind of yeah. how it all began. <laughs> that's what happens when you date artists. Right. Yeah. You, exactly. you get wrapped Go in it. duct tape. We right. Actually, we actually met in high school. 16 years before we met again, oh, so, so art funny. is kind of our our main reason for meeting. That's so neat. we met again and decided that this is what we like to do and made a business yeah. out of it. So with the with the mass, um, she had started a first sculpt and we um, kind of went into the cosplay aspect of it and with it becoming what it is now everybody yeah. can find so much right on how to make their own stuff we know you know kind of didn't have to do that anymore because everybody could do it themselves yeah so we had to find a way to keep doing our art outlet in our business yeah and i made like the world's worst hockey mask that you've ever seen in your life <laughs> and got contacted by um a minor league team they're like, oh. oh, hey, we love that. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. So, um, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> we contacted them, talked to them, um, got the license for two minor league hockey teams, mm -hmm. uh, minor league baseball team, and then we just kind of transitioned into Halloween. That's insane. Now, so we go to a lot of cosplay shows, um, a lot of C like C2E2, yep, and we do too. Yep. stuff like that too, um, because we just we focus more on like darker things normally, but we love to see the. The creative aspect of both like the haunt industry and Halloween and cosplay because they're so similar, but there's not that many companies that are bridging that gap. That Can you just tell right. us a little bit more about how you guys work with that overlap? I think that, like I said, for cosplay, it has turned into something that is a phenomenon to where they can get all of the information they need to make their own costume. So, I mean, it's all making costumes. Of course, I don't think yeah. there really and is a bridge to gap. I just think there's people that this, do. Yeah. Is that we've got something that can start in one costume arena, but it can actually work into another. Right. Everything we have is, is relatively new. Okay. Um, we based it on the hockey mask from the leagues that we do have. Okay. Um, and then kind of brought back the old Collegeville art. Okay. Um, nothing, you know, obviously nothing is licensed or anything, but sure. for, we just wanted to kind of pay homage to where Halloween started. I mean, yeah. the trick or treat started in like 1927 or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And that it started all of this. So um, we have uh, kind of party masks for colleges, high school, stuff like this. We have the hockey masks that are also the kind of old school feel yeah. of, you know, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s masks. And then, uh, Mally, you can go ahead and. So the Breakfast Buddies line is a line that that I hand sculpted. So oh. all of those are hand sculpted, and then they're vacuum formed. Um, Amazing. Once they're printed. Yeah. And we just picked series one. It focuses on six of our favorites, but we're hoping that we get to do a series two. Yeah. There's so many different. Fun yeah, Captain characters Crunch that should be in do. series one, but he didn't make the cut. So <laughs> dang it, next time. Or right? like the Cheerios B or yeah, or whatever it is. But it could bring a new life to. Uh, an aspect of Halloween that we haven't seen in a while. I think one of the things that we're most excited about is we just acquired the licensing for Collegeville. Um, anybody that knows Collegeville knows that it's the old school vinyl masks like these over here yeah. and the you know vinyl aprons. Um, so what we're hoping to be able to do is do repop masks, you know, repop boxes. And yeah. then instead of doing like the vinyl schmock, do something practical like a t-shirt or an apron or something that'll still have that, that nostalgic that feel, feel but you know, also something that's also new and kind of bridge that gap. Yeah, no, that, well, I'm excited to see that for sure. Thank you so much yeah. for letting us chat with you. Thank it was you. awesome getting to know you. Of course. And um, for people uh, who are here at the show, what booth number are you? We're 840. And tell us again where we can find you on social media. You can find us on uh, social media for Instagram and Twitter, Facebook, at Mount Me Masks. Amazing.